Hi, I'm Angela Robertson and this is my associate, Tony Pankalewick. Charmed, I'm sure. Today we'll be sitting down and having a chat with Dr. Daryl Sparks, who's an associate director and also a senior lecturer at the University of Southern Queensland in their Department of Media and Production. Uh, we'll also be looking at the web series Foreign Market by director James Latter. And brace yourselves for a blast from the past when we take a look at the 80s films Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You're watching Showreel. Welcome back to Showreel. Uh, joining us today is University of Southern Queensland's Media and Production Senior Lecturer, Dr. Daryl Sparks. How are you today, Daryl? Hey guys, nice to be on the show. Thanks very much for inviting me. Awesome having you. Yep. So, um, yeah, how long have you been working in the industry? Oh, probably too long. Um, <laughs> uh, some people will probably say, yeah, way too long. Um, I started um, many years ago in the 80s. I went to film school. Um, at the Queensland College of Art and then after that uh, my first job was in advertising in Melbourne. I worked for an advertising agency and we did lots of ads that nobody remembers anymore except for one that everyone remembers because I was the camera assistant on the RSPCA All Creatures Great and Small ad where the little animals come running into the studio and then the wombat comes in all bandaged up <laughs> and that sort of thing. Um, so that was that was sort of the thing and they're still playing it today. That was shot in 1987 um, and the whole studio just smelt like elephant poo for weeks <laughs> afterwards. It was, it, it, that was my, in my introduction into the film industry. So after that um, I worked, kicked around television stations. I worked in news for Channel 10 as a cameraman and that was fun because I used to do the court reports and every time a criminal's family would come out of the courts, they'd attack the camera people. So, you know, I got a few punches in the head <laughs> back then, but that's all part and parcel of, of working in the media. Um, and then I went into uh, editing and, and then directing television for kids, kids television. And um, then I worked for Channel 7 for quite a few years on The World Around Us, which was a, a documentary series that they used to run every Saturday. And we so made was, lots of so, so when you were younger, is this something you always aspired to do, or was it the smell of animal poo that really ah oh, well that, that inspired yeah, so you? I'd never work in advertising again. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, like most people that come out of film school, uh, you've got your head full of stars. And you want to be a film director. Um, unfortunately, the film industry, or you know, television does very well in Australia and is doing exceedingly well. Film industry, not so well. Mm. Um, so I did work on a, on a few features. Um, uh, that you know never saw the light of day I think they were very cheap ones um, but it just was very difficult to get full-time work at just making films mm -hmm. and I think that's still the case today. Because yeah. that brings me to my next question and it ties in perfectly since you're a teacher what do you try to get across to your students in trying to break through to the film industry like what advice do you give them? Well the main usual the main advice is to start with is I just say wake up uh, and get off Facebook <laughs> which most of them are um, but the main central thing about any sort of educational facility is we're, we're not really training people to be to walk into jobs as a director or a producer or a DOP they're the jobs you sort of learn later on in your career as, as you move along so we like to think that we're lining people up to be apprentices to directors and producers and DOPs and editors and people like that. So when they come out of film school, they know they've got all the uh, the, the technical knowledge and some artistic ability. Um, and then they should go and work for other people who have been in the industry quite a long time and, and become apprentices and, and work their way up that way. And that's what everybody does. So yeah. do you think they understand that hierarchy of I think once when they've you been go out, out of it, you're a runner if you're lucky. Yeah, I think once they've been out of a job for a couple of years, um, <laughs> when they leave film school, they sort of yeah. wise up and go, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not all these, um, you know, Screen Australia grants I'm not getting mm -hmm. <laughs> as directing my my Better new go and feature. buy some coffee for some directors. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking mm -hmm. of like the students, um, what have been some of the big like success stories that you've taught? Well, 
the few that come to mind, I mean, there's been a lot of success stories, but some of the bigger names were, you know, I taught the Spirig brothers mm. who did Undead and then um, they did... Um, Daybreakers. Daybreakers, yes. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> then Peter Spirigal hit me for forgetting that. Um, uh, with Ethan Hawke and Willem Dafoe. Uh, now they've just done another film with Ethan Hawke um, called Predestination. That's going to be a big Sony release. Um, Pete Tame, who has been the producer of Australia's Next Top Model, or every series of that, he's currently producing My Kitchen Rules as well. Mm. Um, so he's done some big reality TV shows. Um, you know, we've got other guys who are like head camera, cameramen at uh, ABC in Canberra. We've got people on radio. We've got people in newsrooms. Mm. We've got people in production areas. We had some students who were working on um, uh, the Underbelly series. Uh, so they've kind of, of gone ago. into all... In, many gone into different the industry areas. in many different areas. Yeah, and I say you've got to be flexible because... Mm. You know, there are there are a lot of jobs out there for people. You've just got to sort of move around a little bit uh, until you find your niche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you joined um, USQ in 2000? 2001. 2001. Yeah, okay. I was working at Channel 7 uh, before that in kids' television. Yeah. So obviously Sydney. technology's changed a lot. So how, how has the department, how does it, has it grown and evolved? Well, you know, the, I remember when I went to film school, we shot everything on 16 and 35 millimetre film and those days are gone. Mm. Um, then cameras got very small. And now with the introduction of 4K cameras and REDs, everything's going big again, which is great because I like see, seeing people lugging these huge cameras and kits around, uh, which were what I had to do. Yeah. Um, and everything has to be clapped as well when you shoot with these cameras. So in a way, we're actually going back to the days of 35 and 16 millimeter film that these are like film cameras that we're producing stuff on now. The craft. Um, yeah. Except you just don't load the film. Mm. You know, you still got to you got to take a measurement for the lens and mm. you know all of these other things. So it's it's actually the skills that I learnt that I thought were were dying have actually now come back to the fore again. Well, on that note, we're going to have to take a small break, but don't go away. We'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back to Showreel. We're here with Dr. Daryl Sparks from the University of Southern Queensland. So Daryl, what can you tell us about the, the local industry? Well, the local industry has gone through a lot of upheaval and ups and downs over the years. And unfortunately, I think for Brisbane, there's, there's not a lot of opportunity for people who want to work in, in television or film. Most of the TV networks centralised to Sydney and Melbourne 10, 15 years ago and cut back on a lot of their production. Uh, you know, I used to work in kids TV um, up at Channel 7 and all of that got moved to, um, to Sydney uh, years ago. Mm. Um, but having said that, there is a real thriving underground film situation happening here with, you know, a lot of people making independent features, a lot of those coming around, a lot of horror, you know, low budget horror movies and things. So there is a lot of work around, not a lot of paid work, unfortunately. Mm. But, you know, if you want to get the artistic juices flowing, Brisbane really is, you know, the, pla the place to happen. Because people are, are really willing to share and help here. Um, unlike other places that I've been to. But if you want, you know, stable paid employment, you know, yeah. Sydney and Melbourne are so definitely places to go. So your bread and butter jobs are Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, well, to cap this um, insight interview with you off, um, what's your favourite movie and who's your favourite actor or director? Um, my favourite movie is a very obscure British film from 1986 called Withnall and I, mm -hmm. about two... Um, unemployed drunken actors in the 1960s with Richard E. Grant and, and Paul McGann. I don't have a favourite actor at the moment. I, I, I don't think many of them too good. My favourite director is, it has to be Wes Anderson, who mm. has the Grand Budapest Hotel out at the moment. He's just such a, a fabulous a aesthetic eye to filmmaking. He, he's a, a true voice. Well, on that note, we'll get ready to fire your flux capacitator because we're looking at 1.21 gigawatts of 80s cinema in our showreel retro reviews segment with Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Let's take a look. Universal Pictures presents everything you always wanted to do in high school with everyone you always wanted to do it with. Hey, bud, let's party. They're the students of Ridgemont High. 
Brad Hamilton, the fast food king. I shall serve no fries for their time. It says 100% guaranteed, you moron. Mister, if you don't shut up, I'm gonna kick 100% of your ass. Charles Jefferson, a man with a mission. Well, what a classic film, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. So I remember watching this in, uh, as a 15 year old, I think it was, came out in 1982. And it had, you know, I just loved it. I thought it was so amazing with its themes of sex and drugs and American high school. But uh, watching it again recently, I sort of looked at it, remembering my own kind of cringeworthy experience in retrospect of growing up 80s. So it resonated more on uh, those sorts of levels. And it's, I actually saw it as quite a dark and claustrophobic um, comedy. Um, so it's, it's a deliberately quintessentially 80s film. I mean, it's jam packed with 80s iconic imagery from beginning till end. You know, it opens with Space Invaders screens and Galaga in video arcades. And yeah, there's, you know, Pat Benatar wannabes, music from the 80s, it's the Go-Go's, Cheap Trick, the Cars, all of that fabulous bubblegum trash 80s stuff that we love so much. Um, Jennifer Jason Lee, as I said, was superb. She's just a very ordinary girl, really, in contrast to um, some of the Playboy starlets you might see elsewhere in the film. Uh, Sean Penn's character Spicoli, his room is basically wallpapered with um, nude women. And um, we don't get any sense of that being anywhere like a reality that these kids are going to, uh, to encounter. Um, and his performance, I have to say, it's the best stoner loser performance you're ever likely to see. And I think anyone that tried to imitate that role later, uh, I think you just have to describe as bogus. Uh, what else? Judge Reinhold's character. Now he thought he had it all. He had the, the good job at the fast food place, the, the car, the steady girlfriend, and it's all a fairly flimsy structure as we find out and he ends up donning the, the pirate costume at the sea shanty restaurant and it's all a bit sad really. Um, but watch it again or for the first time. You're not going to see Californian glamour here. Um, just a bunch of high school kids kind of doing okay. So uh, let's look at another 80s classic. Uh, Tony's had a look at Ferris Bueller's Day Off again recently. Tony? Yes, it would be good. So let's take a look. Ferris, you're sick. And don't go pushing it and making yourself worse. Uh, maybe you're right, Dad. I know I'm right, pal. How'd you get to be so sweet? They bought it. Well, why should he get to skip school when everybody else has to go? I'm taking the day off. Now get dressed and come on over. Ferris, my father loves his car more than life itself. A man with priorities so far out of whack doesn't deserve such a fine automobile. Ferris Bueller's Day Off is a 1986 film by writer-director John Hughes, also known for his film The Breakfast Club. Set in Chicago, the film follows popular high school student Ferris Bueller, played by Matthew Broderick, who decides to skip school, faking illness, and have fun with his best mate and his girlfriend, using the, his ingenuity to fool his parents and principal. His older sister, Jenny, played by Jennifer Grey of Dirty Dancing fame, is, is on his case. She seems tremendously irritated by Ferris' popularity and his ability to fool everyone and get away with it. Now, the plot is very simple, maybe a little too simple, maybe. It does not have the complexities of a film like The Goonies. It's just a teenager skipping school to have fun and his principal and sister trying to bust him. The conception of fun itself, having lunch in a posh restaurant and a trip to the art museum is very different from the usual sex, drugs and rock and roll we are used to with teenagers nowadays, even in the 80s. So what does it that appealed to so many people back then? Well, it was the fact that Hughes made his hero address the audience for most of the film, directly connecting with us um, to his problems, his the wit and his charisma, and he was a very charming man. The appeal of freedom that every teenager seeks and maybe just the use of catchy popular tunes, all of those elements were very popular in its day and even today. I can't really pinpoint it. Whatever it is, it worked because Ferris Bueller's Day Off is a film that re somehow remained in my mind and the mind of many others. And that is an achievement in itself.
And on that note, we're going to wrap up and go to a break, but stay with us and we'll be back for more. Welcome back to Showreel. This week, we're taking a look at James Ladder's web series comedy, Foreign Market, in a mockumentary style in the same vein as The Office. Foreign Market follows Evan Dwyer, a struggling writer with delusions of grandeur. Have a, here's a sneak peek. If you want to take a ride to Flavorville Jump on the gravy train Take a ride to Gravyville with Gravebox Might know that one So what would you like to know? My name's Evan Dwyer, I'm a writer I've, my first real gig on television was writing the jingle for the Greybox ad, which you might remember. I'm sure you do. Written for The Bachelor. Ever heard of it? TV show? Uh, loads of things. Since, since, since then, my, my career has just blossomed. And I'm doing really, really well. I'm writing scripts for uh, Matt Damon, George Clooney, uh, Scarlett Johansson, Scar jo. Lovely girl. Met her on a uh, red carpet do once, and she's just, she is as beautiful as she looks in uh, Women's Weekly. Just really nice, genuine, down to earth, she's nice. This is my, this is my morning routine. Uh, I just make up a sort of a protein, well, I call it my brain shake, and James Cameron, uh, I heard, I read, it has like two of these, or had two of these a day on the set of Avatar, so. And that's that. Do you guys want any of this? Or? So part of my morning routine is I, I set myself a little challenge to keep myself sharp. So I have the one minute mission. So I'll flick through the TV, the channels, just at rapid speeds for one whole minute. And subliminally I'll get ideas just from the pictures. Today I've got hazardous waste, biro, pool's milk. So just up top of my head, uh, I'm gonna do like a kid's feature a la Toy Story about stationery that uh, has to try and escape being sold on clearance. I'll call it biohazard. We'll go on a sec guys. TV, Blu-ray, Foxtel, Subby, Subwoofer, Stereo, Home Security. Okay, day in the life. Hope you enjoy it. We're gonna go get a brew first. Hope you like coffee. Also, hope you got your walking shoes on because I don't have a car. I don't believe in them actually. Apple a day. My uh, fortress of solitude. Any any writer worth his salt has to have his den, his quiet place. And this is my local haunt, my uh, coffee shop, and I love it. It's got um, good coffee, even better records. I'm a vinyl hound. Just uh, one of the art forms I like to hold on to and uh, keep alive. And uh, the staff aren't too bad. Oh, speak of the devil. Hi. Hey. How you going? Yes. Good. Yeah. Because he is charged. Yeah, I was at your lecture uh, the other day at my uni. Oh yeah, you yeah, liked it. You liked it. Yeah, you it was really it? good. Yeah. It was really good. Of course you did. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. That's the thing. When you start to get recognised and stuff, you've got to let go of that anonymity that once fed your creativity, and embrace this celebrity. And I'm fine with that. It's it's one of the things. Oh, sorry. Did you? Yeah. Uh, four sixty for the coffee. You haven't paid me. Four sixty. Yeah. Uh, go you one better. I always carry one of these with me. Sorry, what was your name, love? Mel. Mel? Is that with two L's or? M-E-L. Melly. You're my little Melly, hey? Eh? Yeah. Take that. <laughs> hey, that'll be worth something one day. Cool. Um, thanks, but yeah, I, I can't put some tills. So. Right. Hey, 460. 460. Yeah. Be good. I've got some shrapnel in here. 
got to pay your way always. Even bloody Russell Crowe has to keep the change. All right, guys, we'll go. Impressive local talent there. Yeah, excellent, high yes. quality stuff. Yeah. I yeah. think uh, he may have written that whole episode just to get that uh, biro hazard line in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's definitely the best <laughs> joke in the. What did you think about room? like um everything from the cinematography or that? Do you think it was all good? Like yeah, just, yeah. For considering he's a university graduate or, or still a student, it's yeah, yeah. He's done a very magnificent job there. Very high quality. I thought it was very funny. I thought the story flowed well and all that. And that was only just a taste of it. Like there's still more, which you can find at our website. But yeah, no, I thought he did it very well. Um, I think. And it's got more episodes, so it'll be interesting to see where the story unfolds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. What are your thoughts, Daryl, on the whole the web series as as content? Is it, it? It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because it's all about making money out of distribution, mm. and unfortunately, um, these shows, while they're extremely creative, um, really don't make a lot of money uh, to create to fund a business around this sort of activity. But what I think it is, it's a good calling card for people to produce something like this and then move to the next level with it, yeah. where they actually get funding from the ABC or SBS. You know, some people have already done that. The guy who did a Italian Spider-Man started off with that and now he's got Danger 5 on SBS. Hmm. So, you know, that was a web series to start with. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the consensus with all of us is that it was, it was a very good film. So um, just to cap off before we finish the show, what are your upcoming projects? Oh, well, I've been funded for a, a couple of feature length documentaries at the moment. I'm doing uh, one on exorcism and demonic possession. Mm. And we're following um, Brisbane, uh, Australia's only Vatican ordained exorcist uh, around Australia. So that's, um, we're halfway through shooting that at the moment. Mm. Another one we're doing, which is thematically completely opposite. We're looking at post-traumatic stress disorder amongst our Iraqi and Afghanistan veterans because mm -hmm. more uh, Australian soldiers have actually committed suicide than have actually been killed in, in Iraq and Afghanistan. So we're looking at those issues. Mm. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on, Daryl. That was a fantastic discussion. No, guys, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks yeah. for having me. That's yeah, awesome. And thanks a lot, Ange, as usual. My yep. pleasure. Yep. So you can find all three episodes of Foreign Market on our website, as I mentioned earlier. But on that note, that's all we have time for. Be sure to donate to our Indiegogo campaign funding. It will really make a difference. And make sure to check out our website, our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages. Be sure to catch us same time, same place next week. See you then.